So in order to talk about how fast an object is moving, one of the first things that we have to talk about is time. Uh, it kind of makes sense to us. The more distance you cover in a shorter period of time, the faster you're moving. So time is definitely uh, an important thing when it comes to velocity and speed. Uh, time, usually, uh, we kind of talk about it like displacement, where you have a delta t equals t final minus t naught. Right? So it's a, a change in time, how much time it took to get from one place to another, or how much time elapsed uh, in order for a certain event to occur. Um, but this notation is a little clunky, uh, and it, it kind of makes our equations more difficult to work with when we, things start getting more complicated. The reality of the situation is that 99% of the time, maybe even 100% of the time, t naught is going to be just zero. So our delta t is just equal to t final, however many seconds have elapsed, right? If it took two seconds for us to cover some distance, uh, then that means we started at a time of zero seconds, and two seconds later we were at our new position, and our speed was sort of how long it took to cover that distance. Um, and so t naught is almost always going to be zero. So usually instead of writing delta t in equation, we're just going to write t. When it comes to velocities for now, we're usually going to talk just about the average velocity. Okay, uh, Our average velocity can be defined as our change in x over time. And remember, change in x here is displacement. Okay, So our displacement divided by time is our average velocity. And we're, we're for now, at least, always going to talk about average velocity. Right? What was the average speed it took to get from here to there? So for example, uh, let's say I walked from point zero over here, and I walked this way until I got to a distance of negative four meters. And so my displacement would be x final minus x initial. So, so zero, or negative, I'm sorry, negative four, my final minus my initial zero. So negative four minus zero would give me a delta x of negative four. And let's say that it took me a time of two seconds to do that. So negative four divided by two seconds would be negative two. And our unit for velocity is meters per second. How much distance per time did we cover? Now, notice I have a negative here for my velocity. That's just fine. Remember, that's just telling me something about the direction, right? Are we going in a positive direction? Or are we going in a negative direction? In this case, you can see I'm going towards more negative values. So I'm headed in the negative direction. So it makes sense that my velocity would be negative here as well. So we've talked about average velocity now. Uh, instantaneous velocity, however, is still an important quantity. Um, you know, think of this as like when you're driving down the road and you look down at your speedometer right at that instant, that's how fast you're going. Uh, that's kind of along the lines of instantaneous velocity. Um, so instantaneous velocity is how fast are we going at any particular instant. The way this works is if we think about our average velocity equation, velocity equals delta x over t, what we're talking about is having, remember this is actually equal to kind of a delta t, like a change in time. So what we're thinking about is making this delta t as small as possible, infinitesimally small. So it's, it's a very, very small change in time. So it's right at that instant. What's the distance that we're covering for an infinitesimally small period of time? That's our instantaneous velocity. Um, right now, we don't have a lot of ways to calculate that. Um, we'll work on calculating that later in this chapter, um, but for now we just need to know the definition of instantaneous velocity. In our everyday language, instead of using the word velocity, a lot of times we use the word speed to talk about how fast something is going. Uh, however, we need to be very careful with that because there is a difference between speed and velocity. So remember, let's bring back our equation for average velocity, delta x over t. And remember that this delta x represents a displacement. Okay, uh, a change in position. Speed, however, if we were going to calculate that, would be equal to a distance divided by time. So remember, distance is the length of the path traveled divided by time. So how much total path did you travel divided by time would give you speed. So the big difference here, and the thing we want to remember, is that velocity is a vector because it's going to include a direction, just like displacement did, right? A positive direction, a negative direction. Whereas speed is just a scalar, right? How fast. So, for example, in your car, if you're looking down at your speedometer, it's actually speed that it's measuring and not velocity, because it doesn't tell you which direction you're going. It just tells you how fast you're going. 
So maybe one important key difference here between it. Let's uh, imagine traveling in a circle. Okay. And this circle, uh, to go around the circle, it covers a distance of three meters to go all the way around. And let's say it took us a time of, well, I don't know, one second to get all the way around the circle. Well, let's calculate our speed first. Okay. Speed would be pretty easy. Uh, our distance, three meters to get around the circle, divided by our time of one second, would give me a speed of three meters per second. On the other hand, my average velocity is my displacement divided by time. Well, displacement, remember, is x final minus x initial. Well, here's x final, or x initial right here. That's where I start, and I go around, and there's x final. Well, x final and x initial are the same value, so that means my delta x is actually zero. So zero meters in one second gives me an average velocity of zero meters per second. So because I started where I ended, uh, my average velocity is actually zero meters per second. It's as if I didn't go anywhere. So let's try a quick sample problem here. We have a train travels a distance of 40 miles from station A to station B. So a lot of times it helps us to draw a picture here. So station A over to station B, and that's a distance of 40 miles. Okay. And then once they get to station B, they travel back to station A. That total thing takes one hour and 40 minutes uh, to make things nice and easy. I'm going to go ahead and convert that all into minutes. So one hour is 60 minutes plus 40 minutes is in a time of 100 minutes. So given that, let's start with the first part. We want to calculate our average velocity. Well, average velocity is displacement over time. Well, this, if we kind of recognize what's happening in the problem, can be a very simple problem. Uh, because I'm starting where I end, that means x final is equal to x naught. So my delta x is equal to 0. So my average velocity is also equal to 0 meters per second. Now, notice I put it in 0 meters per second because that's mks units. You'll notice miles and minutes will not give us mks units. So let's go ahead and convert things so that they do give us MKS units. We know that we go 40 miles one direction and then 40 miles back, so that's a total distance of 80 miles. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the conversion up to you, but 80 miles comes out to 128,747.52 meters. And our time, well, we have 100 minutes and there's 60 seconds in a minute, so 60 times 100 is 6,000 seconds. So now we have our, our quantities in MKS units, meters and seconds, so I can calculate my average speed, my total distance, 128,747.52 meters, divided by my total time, 6,000 seconds, gives me a total or an average speed of 21.46 meters per second. And that would be our uh, average speed for that trip.